everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Press on just a little while longer. Press on. But in your pressing, you got to hold on just a little while longer. Truly to God be the glory. Thank you ever so much, Minister Hamilton, for that song, for the words of that song are true. God has had me in many places, you know, and even early this morning in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, God's word is true. He tells you and I to everything, there is a season to everything. So we just got to find whatever season we're in, we just got to hold on for just a little while long. Whatever purpose we're going, wherever we find ourselves, just hold on for a little while longer because everything is going to be all right. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. It's a time. It, you know, if I had to speak from that, you, you, you know, I would ask you and you have to examine your own self, you know, as to what time is it for you? Because Ecclesiastes lays it out as to a time for everything. You, you name it, it's in the word of God. So what time is it for you? No matter where we find ourselves, though, we just got to hold on just a little while long. Keep pressing. Don't stop now. The moment you stop, that's quitting. And once you quit, that's where you stuck right there in the muck and the marl. You can't quit. You got to press on just a little while longer. Scripture was read this morning. I want to read it again for you real quick. Coming out of 2 Timothy, the second chapter, verses 1 through 5, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure harsh hardness as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No man that war entangleth himself in the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Pray with me, pray for me, pray with me as I pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank thee, dear Lord God, ever so much for your word. Father God, as you have told us to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Father God, open these ears of ours that we may hear what thus says the Lord this day that it will find some good ground upon the heart to embed it therein. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us again, it will bring back the goodness of the Lord that we have received in these ears to fall upon the good ground of these, this heart. So Father, we thank thee, dear Lord God, and we praise thee ever so much for this day. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen, amen, and amen. I'm not going to be before you long today. Again, truly to God be the glory, but I'm going to speak to you in a language uh, in the beginning that a lot of you will not understand, but like you say, be swift to hear. Amen. It was read 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 5, but I just want to look at the scripture of 2 Timothy, the third chapter. It says, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you for just a moment concerning basic training. Basic training. Basic training is uh, a system that the United States has established for any and all that enters into any branch of service. 
there was a time that uh, the drafting was in uh, in place where they were drafted. Uh, males will have to do their registration and will get a card in the mail with a letter and a number on it. And it had to be between the ages of 20 and 45. You know, they were being drafted into the military. But then in January 1973, you know, that drafting went away. It became where now they had recruiters to go out and talk to young men and, and young women, you know, to get them to join into any and all branches of the military. Well, you could do it voluntarily whether the recruiter came or you felt the desire that you want to be a part thereof and you could go and take the test and pass the test, the physical exam and so forth and enlist into the service that you so desire. But you had to go through what is called basic training. And basic training, it, 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 it took you out of, totally out of your norm. Where you used to run the streets and do this and do that, you know, in basic training, there was no going of anywhere. Not that you was on what they call lockdown, because if you felt the desire to leave, you could leave. Yeah, but it, it, it would be permissive that you left, though. That's what they would call a, 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 a wall absent without leave, you know, so you could leave, but basic training was to teach you the basics of what was going to be required of you to continue to perform as you continue your service in the military. Now they had what they call drill sergeants. Now I remember when I went in and, and the drill sergeant, he, he, he would let you know that he was your mother, and your father, if you needed anything, you were to come to him because he was the one that was going to instruct you and teach you everything that you needed to know to continue being a soldier. And truly it's amazing, you know, they, they had to teach you how to walk. We didn't know how to walk when we, before we went into the military. They had a way of walking that you had to walk would, would take a certain strive and you had to swing your arm. This day and time, sometimes we just like to walk and just take be half what we call half stepping, but in the military, you had to take a full step, swing them arms left, uh, you know, back and forth. You, you know, you had to walk right. Even taught you how to march. Lord knows when you're all marching together, you was in sync. And therefore, in marching, you had to know how to walk. You had to step in unity with one another. Taught you how to respect one another. And that respect, it started from your collar down to your right shoulder chest area. Because your name always started with an individual for any and everybody with whatever they had on their collar down to the last name that was uh, stenciled onto their the uniform. We call it BDU, battle dress uniform. Even taught you how to salute. Had to salute officers, anyone that outranked you in the, of course officers was outranking if you were in, an enlisted individual. But basic training was to teach you and take you out of your norm. We call him Uncle Sam. You know, Uncle Sam issued you everything that you that he was sure that you needed to perform the task that you were faced while serving in the service. He did. You had to go to a place, they call it uh, CIF, I think, and they would issue you everything you needed. And I like now Uncle Sam because once you enlisted, he gave you everything. The boots that you had to wear, the socks that you need to go with that, the top, the bottom, even the hat you had to wear on your head, he issued you everything. And for whatever training purpose that you was in there for, he made sure that he had everything covered that you needed. 
even when you enlisted now, they did what they had the recruiter. He never sold you on what you wanted to do, but it came to a point when you had to go and sign that contract that you was given a certain MOS, as we call it. That MOS is simply your mission occupational special. That was your assigned duty or job that you were going to be performing in while serving in the military. Once you completed your uh, a, your basic training, there was a part that you would go through called AIT. That was another area that you would continue to learn more in your MOS before they sent you further and further into your regular duty assignment. I like it that they had, you, you, you know, some orders that you had to follow. And being obedient was one of them. And you had to learn the chain of command. That drill sergeant, he was the only one that you could go to during that time while you're in basic training. But he taught you the, the rank structure that you knew what to call an individual when you saw the individual's collar and the name on their BDUs. A battle dress uniform. It had to be dressed right. Couldn't be, you know, the old civilian clothes that you brought when you went to basic training. They took that stuff away from you uh, uh, day two after getting there and issued you your BDUs. And that's what we, we all look the same. And we were the same. Doesn't matter where you was from in, in, in the world, uh, New York, West Virginia, Chicago, we all were the same because we was enlisted in man's army. But the word says that thou for endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As a good soldier, now, one must live up to certain standards if he's a good soldier. He got to. And one of the most key things of being a good soldier is to be obedient. We've been talking about that in our study for a long time now. In, in, in our Sunday school lessons, you know, being obedient. Because even with Uncle Sam, as we call him, you got orders that you had to follow. Every, every day there was an order of how things were to be conducted every moment of the day that you were there. Amen. Well, again, now remember there was that time of coming into the military, whether you were recruited or you were drafted. It, well, drafted ended, but you, you volunteered. But now in God's army, this is where you and I should find ourselves. This is where you and I want to be as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. This is where you and I want to be now. But in God's army, God reminds us real quick. He says in St. John, the 15th chapter, in the 16th verse, he says, let me get your attention. You have not chosen me, but I chose you. In other words, God drafted you, you know, when we were knee deep in sin, God saw us and he said, well, I got a plan for you. I got to pick you up out of that muck and marrow, but I got to, I, I, I got to bring you over to get you to come over to where I need you to be. You didn't chose me now, choose, but I have chosen you. So we got to remember now, we just can't up and leave, be a wall, a double O loose, as we used to say. We can't just up and leave God. Because God made a command to you and I. He tells you and I, once he has enlisted you and I, he says, I will never leave you, nor would I forsake you. In my time with Uncle Sam, I learned Uncle Sam, he will forsake you now. He will, but God says, I'll never leave you, nor would I forsake you. 
He goes on a little bit long, a little further. He says in St. Matthew's the 22nd chapter in the 37 through 39 verse, he says, Jesus says unto them, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Come on now. Just like in basic training, you had to learn your chain of command. You had to learn the command. This is what God is showing you and I as to where we need to be as a good soldier now. We're talking about the basic training of being a, a soldier for the Lord. We have to be obedient. We got to love the Lord our God with all our heart. He didn't say with some of it. And I talked about this once before, you know, for us married individuals, you, you know, we made a vow as to how much we love one another. Somewhere in there it says, till death do us part. But now we've never made a vow unto God as to how much we love him. But God says, love me, love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. Our mind should be steadfast on nothing and no one but our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God tells you and I said, let this mind be in you. It was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. He goes on to tell us in St. John 14, 15. Now he says, if ye love me though, keep my commandment. Anytime you and I fail to be obedient unto God, it's showing a disrespect or a lack of love that we have for our commander. God is our commander. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not, he, God is in control. So if ye love me, keep my commandments. That's what God instructs you and I to do daily. Not sometime, but daily. And he has it written down in here, you know, as to what we ought to do and how we ought to do it is in his word. I know that we call the word of God, the Bible. I heard people say that the Bible simply means basic instruction before leaving earth. If this was our basic instruction, when we examine ourselves as God has commanded us to do, we will see how we fall short in being obedient under God. Amen. But we got, we come up, we got to do that. We got to do that. We know without a shadow of a doubt, even in this hero world when we was a child and even today, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because even today now, with us that, that are still working, if you are continually late for your job, one day you, I, I remember people working at a place one day when they were just continually late. They, the day that they came in, they worked them, but when it was time for them to leave that day, they gave them a pink slip. This is your last day here. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We talked about Uncle Sam as to how he gave you, issued you everything that we stood in need while we was in the military to perform whatever service we uh, was in there for. But Jehovah Jireh is our provider. Jehovah Jireh now, you got to write that down. He is our provider. Because it's in his word, you know, that the earth in the fullness therein, it all belongs to him. So everything that you and I have in our possession, even some of the desires that we have from our heart, he will provide. He will not leave us lacking anything. 
he will not hold any good thing from us. He is our provider. St. Matthew 6 and 25 takes us to this point. It says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Raymond, every day we have to dress the right way. God says to you and I, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We got to get dressed right, people. Like Uncle Sam had all of us with the boots, the beat he used, even the very hat that we wore. We all look the same. We all should look the same. We got to be dressed right, dressed with God Almighty. Weekdays. I, I, I don't even like that word weak. I know it's W-E-E-K, but there's a play time in there where some people have W-E-A-K. I don't have no weak W-E-A-K day. Every day with me, with the Lord, is a good, strong day. Because there's no weapon that is formed against me. It shall not prosper because I walk in the faith that God has given me to trust wholly in him. As a good soldier, I know the times are going to be hard. I never thought that I would have to go through war with mankind's army. But again, you know, even while in there, God was right there. Even in this day and time when I'm going through, but when something comes against me, stand still. It tells you and I, stand still and see the salvation. That's his salvation. That's his deliverance. That's him bringing us through it. He, it came to us. He will take us through it, and there's joy on the other side. Basic training. It's not hard. I, I, nobody told me that basic training with, with mankind would be easy, and nobody short of didn't tell me being a soldier of the Lord would be easy. It's not easy. You got to learn. Just like when Uncle Sam, the MOS that you had to sign up for, you had to be trained in it. Just like in being a soldier of the Lord, you have to be trained in it. He tells you and I in 2 Timothy, again, the second chapter in the 15th verse, he tells you and I to study. Study. To show yourself approved under God, not nobody else. He didn't tell you go get a degree. He didn't tell you you had to have a bachelor's degree, a social degree, a master in this and a master in that, but show yourself approved under God. Study. Pick him up. Read. Study his word. It is his word that gives us the wisdom and the understanding of how he wants you and I to be and what we are to do and how we are to do it. Study to show thyself approved unto God. St. Luke 16 and 13 tells us, no man, no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. That's where you and I got to examine ourselves. We cannot be straddling the fence. We can't act so holy and sanctified on a day of Sabbath that we have set aside that we're going to give God the praise to receive his good news and, and, and do the sing songs and pray prayers and so forth. We can't do that today. And then tomorrow, well, he ain't got to wait until tomorrow. Let the other side of us just start showing where we're straddling the fence. We cannot do that. With Uncle Sam, there was never a race mentioned with Uncle Sam. We were all soldiers. So it is with God. We're all soldiers of Jesus Christ. Exodus 30, 20 and, th and 3, verse 3, tells you and I that we cannot dash or have no other God before me. That's a command that God has given you and I. 
Don't you put nothing and no one before him. I know we made that testament, that statement or that, that vow to our husband and to our wives and to our children and so forth. <laughs> uh, nah, mm -mm. God is always, if he's not first in your life, you better make him first right now. Shouldn't have no other God before me. These immaterial things that you and I have in our possession, again, they're man-made, but they're all of, of God. Don't fall in love with those things. They cannot and will not do you any good. They will serve the purpose in which you and I have them, but it will never save the soul from its destiny of going to hell if you love it. God tells you and I in his word, love not the world nor the things that are in it. It won't do you no good. He that loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We got to make sure we study to show ourselves approved unto God. Paul said it many times. But he said, but I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren. We have the only book, the word of God, that we have to study. When Uncle Sam, they had more FMs and TMs and pamphlets that you had to study and know because you were tested on your knowledge in order to move on up in the rank. But with God, we only have one book, one book that has all that we need to know and study. Don't be ignorant. It's right there. I, I, I'm going to use this there. I'm going to talk about somebody because here it is. You know, a lot of us know about the ins and out of the job that we do for mankind. But what about what thus says the Lord? Study, pick up his word daily. Just as much as you pick up that spoon and that fork to eat, feed this eel clay body, we should be picking up the word of God, reading and studying his word. In God's word, he gives us all the instruction or commands to guide us in the way he wants us to be. I told you I wasn't going to be before you too long. As I get ready to close, you know, Revelation 3 and 15 tells us this. He says, hey, this, this is God talking to you and I. He says, I know thy work. I know what you're doing. We cannot hide anything from God Almighty. You, you know, the darkness that we want to used to play around and scheme and do things and sin in darkness. You know, God, it, it was just as bright as daylight is to God, even when the sun is shining. I know thy work. I know your obedience. I know how much you love me. This is God talking to you and I. When he says, I know thy work. He has reminded me so many times that I've seen things, I've heard things, but you know what he said? Work out your own salvation. I got to get my life right with God. You have to get your life right with God. If God has brought you, if God has called you, if he has picked you up out of the muck in the marrow, he has placed you on a solid rock. But don't step off that solid rock into that sinking sand. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot instead of being lukewarm. People, good soldiers of Jesus Christ, we got to be on one accord. Just as Jesus walked and talked with the Lord, that's how you and I need to be, walking and talking to God Almighty. Jesus even instructed you and I, said, when you pray, don't pray to him. 
but pray ye unto the Father. That's who Jesus prayed to. Pray ye unto the Father. It's even better to do it in secret. You do it in secret, he will reward thee openly. We don't have to stand on the street corner. We don't have to stand out in a crowd. We don't have to be loud with our praying when we pray it unto the Father. But pray ye unto the Father, and he will reward thee openly. Basic training. It's not hard to be a soldier of the Lord. I know there's a song that talks about being a soldier of the Lord, but it's not hard to be a soldier of the Lord. If I can be obedient unto man, kind as to what time I have to be to work, what instructions I have to do, and how I am to perform my task while I'm at that job for the eight or 12 hours, I should be able to be obedient unto my God, my provider, my all in all. I should be obedient unto him. For there is no other God, nor man, nor woman, nor anything that I will put before my Lord and my Savior. God is my God. And he is the only one. He's not a thing and never will be a thing. He's the only one that I will serve. And being obedient unto him, Everything will fall into place. <laughs> it, 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 it's there. It's in his word. And it's not hard. I, I, I've talked to God and I've questioned him many times on things, but he would always send me right back to his word. His word is true. It's the only book. It's only one book. Like I say, we title it the Bible and we don't know what the word Bible means. I've never found it in the word of God, but it's, it, we title it as the Bible, but it's the word of God and we got it. Study, be obedient. Once you learn to do better, I heard somebody say this, once you learn right from wrong, once you learn to do better, do better. Stop going down that same road that we used to go down, you know, and just be a disobedient, but walk right. Talk right and do right as God has instructed you and I to do and how we are to be. Basic training. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. If you love him, he says, keep my commandments. Keep them all. Not one, but keep them all. And being obedient unto God. Basic training. Heavenly Father, we thank thee, dear Lord God, and we give thee the praise, the honor, and all the glory. Continue to instruct and teach us, dear Lord God, because we are always learning. We are your children, dear Lord God, up under you, dear Heavenly Father, that you are the one to lead and guide us. But without you, dear Lord God, we are lost. But we want you and need you to lead us and guide us and teach us in all thy ways and all thy knowledge. Heavenly Father, it's in Jesus' name we come to thee this day. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.